All right, let's go out to St. Louis, Missouri, and talk to Kaylin. What's up, Kaylin? Hi, Dr. John. What's happening? Oh, your classic catchphrase is partying, so I guess you could say partying. Oh, that means not good at all? <laughs> no, no, the sun is shining. It's a, it's a great day. Oh, no, um, you've gone to weather to make yourself feel good. It must be really <laughs> bad. <laughs> what happened? What's up? Um, well, I'm, I'm currently about, um, I guess, time frame wise, I'm about one month in from um, discovering that my husband of 11 years uh, was cheating. Uh, man, um, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And um, I've, I've got a, a kind of multi pronged question here. So just bear with me. Um, but I think the big, biggest thing is just how do I process the grief of that betrayal? Yeah. Um, how do I cope with the continued dishonesty um, in the, the days following? Um, you know, we're, as I said, a month out and um, there continues to be, um, you know, lies and inconsistencies and some gaslighting, in my opinion. Um, Are there any kids also, involved? Yeah, there is. Uh, yeah. We have three, three daughters. Oh, boy. And unfortunately, he's also a part of a family business um, with my side of the family, which makes this a little bit more complicated because there seems to be a little bit more um, stake involved for other you know, family members. And I'm struggling a little bit with the lack of family support from ones that I had expected it to come from. Um, but ultimately, um, again, the sun is shining, right? And there's always a new day. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. I... Let, let's don't do that. Let's don't do that. I don't want to just blow past how devastating this is. And you've added a mm -hmm. couple layers. Um, often yeah, when we think, lot. yeah, when we think about cheating, we think about like this very, very intimate personal betrayal. Right. But we often don't realize until it's upon us that our whole world has exploded mm -hmm. down to Very who makes, so. who makes lunches for the kids and who's going to drive them. And how do we switch off to, mm -hmm. in your case, I thought my dad would be on my side on this deal. Or I thought my brother, you know what I mean? So, it, I mean, for you, yeah. you're losing everything, right? Yes. That's so, what it feels like. So the sun might be shining and I, I appreciate the sentiment Right. But it is raining all over your, your life. Right. And that's I'm okay. Trying. Well, trying is good, but mm -hmm. I don't want you to gloss over it because your body's going to continue to solve for the shenanigans that is everything right now. Yeah. There's a lot of craziness. Yes. Yes. Um, that's she, another statement. What happened in, in your marriage? What happened? I, I don't really know. When I've asked him about the why, um, I mean, because initially in the first week, that was just why, you know, my only thought was just why, why, why? Mm -hmm. Why this over us? You know, why did you pick this over and over over us? Um, you know, and he says it was for excitement. Um, he felt like I didn't want him around anymore. Mm -hmm. Um we stopped saying we loved each other, I guess, and is what he said. I, I don't really feel that though. I mean, were we in a season of life where we were disconnected? Certainly we have three young, very, very young kids. Um, you know, and you know, we were in the day to day hustle and the grind, but we were still communicating. And I mean, I guess, I couldn't have been more shocked. I felt like he had been living a double life. Um, so you're speaking as though you felt these things in the past tense, and then you got some new information to realize, oh, he wasn't living a double life. You were just a terrible, terrible person to be married to, and all of this makes sense now. I've had a month to... how I, I process some of it, so I think that's helped me realize that, yeah, you 
probably were a little shady, you know, for a while since you've been doing this, you know, for quite some time. Um, I believe he was doing it longer than he says, but I've got no proof of that. And honestly, it probably doesn't matter anyway. It's, it's done now. Um, did you move out? Or did no, you move out? I, I asked him to give me some time and space while we kind of figured things out. And we are working with a, a marriage counselor. We do have different goals um, with that marriage counselor. Um, he wants to try to make it work. I would like to, you know, move past this so that we can, uh, you know, just co-parent effectively and not, you know, traumatize our, our children, um, you know, and be emotionally mature adults. Kaylin, around them. I, can, I can't tell if you're in a state of shock <laughs> or if yeah. you have settled because your, your affect is, is, not congruous with the words you're using. Um, does, well, I'm probably trying to do the steps that feel right, that I know should, should be, okay. you know, the things that I should do. Um, but I, I mean, there is a lot of shock, certainly. Okay. Um, and I think I'm just trying to process it, you know, day to day. Um, but I'm trying to be the most logical, um, I mean, that's just my nature. I'm type A, I'm, I'm kind of a planner anyway. So my fear um, is you are, you have sealed up the, um, pressure relief valves so tight so uh that you can make what you think in the moment is a rational decision mm -hmm. that you implode or really explode. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm um, um, have you said out loud, I'm not going to be your wife anymore. You took this from us. And so now I'm going to take control of my life moving forward. Have you said those words out loud? No, not to that effect. I mean, not, not that specifically. Um, but I've, I've said, you know, the years, the, I've set boundaries in place for these are the times when you need to be at the house so that you can the kids need to see you. Um, obviously, I, we you know we still need help. Need help around the home. We we have a very very little one um, at well, home. He may need to yeah. hire that help because what okay. he did was he made some choices. They're going to have some significant consequences, both because he lost his family mm -hmm. and he lost. Um, the picture, he lost, he lost everything. And it's going to come mm -hmm. with some significant financial consequences. Mm -hmm. And in my, my fear is in an effort to make everything rational and simple and still, mm -hmm. you're going to end up getting dragged underwater because things are not still. The waters, you're in the middle of a hurricane. Mm -hmm. And so when you're in the middle of a hurricane, often... I, I mean, let me just say it this way, unless it's something I specifically have trained for. So for instance, if somebody um, comes running into the office right now and says, so-and-so's um, on top of the building about to kill themselves. I've trained for that. I know what the, I, kn mm -hmm. I know the protocol there. Um, other than that, like or in, in, in similar situations, in bonker situations like that. Other than that, if somebody was to come hurt my wife, let's say, I will outsource, outsource my rational decision-making to an attorney mm -hmm. and to the police department and to a couple of close friends and colleagues that I have um, high trust in. Because if I don't honor those feelings in that season, my body's going to implode. And my kids are going to think I'm insane. And they're going to think they're insane. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Right. It's almost like you're trying to keep everything so cool, so cool, so cool. And everything inside your guts knows this is not cool. What's happening with this family business? Uh, 
Well, he works with my father, and... Why hasn't your father I, thrown him out and fired him immediately? Because it's coming on their busy time of year uh, where it's not... Uh, I, I guess it wouldn't be at the, you know his best interest to do that right now. Um, you know what comes before the best interest of my daughter? Nothing. Right, right. I, no things. Right. I hope you sit in how disgusting that is and don't wallpaper over that too. That's the second most important man of your life that's let you down. And I would tell that to his face if he was standing right here. I don't care how busy, whatever crap season's coming up. Right. I could care less. I, I, I agree. I mean, I know that on this, yes, that's what it looks like. Um, no, 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 no. And it, and it feels like what, that. That's what it is. Um, yeah, I, I know. What kind of business do they run? Um, agriculture. So they, they farm together. I just can't imagine. Cannot imagine. My daughter having three baby girls. And her husband cheating on her a bunch. And then clocking in for work. What's up, man? Well, John, if you want to feel, um, I guess, even more confused, um, add this to the dynamic. Um, my father's told me that he doesn't believe it was cheating because it was not physical. Because it was sexting. Um, there was a lot of conversations had over... Um, um, different social media platforms and different apps. Yeah. So in my dad's standpoint, he doesn't agree that it was physical. And when I explained to him that the marriage counselor has validated my thoughts that yes, it is cheating. Um, uh, our marriage counselor um, is a, a Christian based counselor and actually explains that in the Bible, you know, um, I don't. Hey, I, I don't care if you were seeing like an atheist Satanist, right? They yeah, would agree I mean, that wrong. this is this I mean, is infidelity. Your, your moral, yeah. Right, your moral compass knows and better. It is super rare. I don't mm -hmm. have any data on this. Okay, so whatever. But it is rare that somebody has multiple engagements with people that start sending photos and there's nothing else. Very rare. And you know that, and I know that. Right. I mean, it's just, it's dishonest. I mean, the, the, and then that's what I've explained to my father. And, you know, I mean, at the end of your, the day. Your father has cashed whether, out. Your father cashed yeah. out. Right. Thank you. He chose, he chose his bro over his daughter. Thank you for validating that. That I, means a lot. I hate that for you. Because when your husband does you wrong, there should be that one guy left in your corner. And um, I've never experienced this, but I've just sat with enough sexual assault victims over time mm -hmm. that they tell me one of the most important things is when they tell their story, finally, that the first person they tell them believes them. Mm -hmm. And one step removed from sexual assault, this violation, that somebody took something from me, the next step is somebody took something from you. Somebody took your family away because they just need some excitement, want to feel alive a little bit. And Kaylin, you just weren't doing your part. I know you're raising those three babies, but you just, you know, kind of weren't pulling your weight around here, making me feel special. And you sat down with your dad and he looked at you and said, I don't believe you. I believe that guy. And I've never been in your shoes but from the narratives I've heard from sitting with countless women in that situation, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. The question you have to live with, I mean, live into is what are you going to do next? And it sounds wow. like the two men that should have been there for you chose each other and chose deception and chose dishonesty. And by doing so, they chose to no longer be in relationship with you. Mm -hmm. and that's going to hurt, 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 hurt. 
It it does. And I think my logical brain knows that the only way forward is divorce. I I don't see how we can rebuild the trust, the respect. It's possible. You can rebuild it. Mm -hmm. But you got to tell the truth first. And he's not. So far, that hasn't happened. Correct. And and that's, uh, yeah. Um, and it's going to be hard. It's going to get harder before it gets any easier. I know that. But um, the well, lack let, of let's family be, support makes it more. There's no family support. And let's be real, real like brass tacks. Being a single mom with three girls, three little kids is a mm -hmm. nightmare. Financially, yes. like just day to day, it's challenging. Yeah, it'll be challenging. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. And that, and listen to me carefully. You've got to have a group of women that will walk alongside you during this. I wish that would be your family, but it sounds like it's not. I have some family members that that will. Um, my mom's been really supportive, but okay. that's hard for their marriage because she is still married to well they're grown-ups so that's that's for them to deal right. with that's not for you no i yeah right but you also need a couple of women in your life that are not um your best buddies mm -hmm. also you're 30 days out and i think a separation is good i don't think this has to end in divorce it doesn't have to it can if you want it to um you're not crazy but I feel crazy sometimes. I know, because the people around you are gaslighting you so bad, you can't see straight. Yeah. Right? Yep. If I send naked pictures to somebody else or vice versa, that's cheating on my wife, period. Period. Mm -hmm. It just is. Mm -hmm. it just is. Yep. And nobody wants to see naked pictures of me, so I'll put that out there. But if I do that as cheating... And anybody who tells you otherwise is just trying to, has ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. Yep, I, I agree. I hate this for you. 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 The hard part on calls like this, Kaylin, is there's no easy, just go do these three things. You're doing the right things right now. You're meeting with a counselor. You're talking to your mom who trusts you and believes you, it sounds like. You need to get a couple of women that you say, hey, I need to meet with y'all once a week, every Monday. Whew. You need to sit down with your analytical brain and be very clear about the financial needs that you need right now in your home. And that could include someone to help out with the kids. That could include somebody to help out with um, like housework and things like that. And your husband gets to pick up that tab. And you're going to have to explore the really uncomfortable, like everything in your life got dumped over, life change of going to get a job, going to find work, and figuring out what that means and what that looks like and how that's going to work out in your town and all like your qualifications, all that. Here's the, the challenge with an analytical brain, the approach you're taking. There's a challenge with an over-emotional, right? It's just, ah! And it's just hard to even make a rational choice. You've hit the, hit the pendulum so far the other way. The hard part with a rational choice is you don't feel it. And you try to just make sure everything's smooth, which without meaning to, you end up conceding to things for the sake of peace. You keep this peacekeeper role, which you've probably had for a long time. And you just try to get to the next quick second and the next 30 minutes and the next 30 minutes, which is life with three little kids. That's also a mindset. They've studied minds, uh, folks with poverty mindset. They've studied folks with a wealth mindset. Those who can look past tomorrow, that's how you begin to separate yourself financially. And if I'm worried about where my next meal comes from and my next meal comes from, I'm always just worried about where my next meal is coming from. Not when I start worrying about where my grandkids' meals are going to come from. And so you're going to have to get some people with you to help you feel your way through this and not just try to logic your way through it and logic your way through it. There's going to be some moments when you have to outsource your logic to an attorney, to a therapist. What do I do next? And they're going to say, 
You need to have this hard conversation or that hard conversation. And you're going to have to spend some time. Maybe you write yourself letters. Maybe you start journaling. I'd, I'd really strongly recommend that, actually. And make it a daily practice. I'm going to write down how I feel. Because if you bottle that up like a nuclear reactor, your daughters are going to feel it. You're going to feel it. Everyone around you will feel it. And you're going to be trying to be cool as a cucumber. That's just a recipe for combustion. And people with a rational analytical mind are always trying to get things back to the way they were. I just need to get things. I need to get this divorce over so that everything can be smooth. I just need to get this over so everything can be smooth. I just need to tell this, have this one conversation and give this um, dollar amount that I need over so that everything can be smooth. There is no going back to the way things were. Everything's different now. Everything's different now. And husband, if you're watching this, the only chance you have at reconciliation and building something new is you got to tell the truth. All of it. All of it. Starting now. And dads, if your daughters come to you, believe them. 